Does anyone know when multi-track recorders first appeared? You know, who know? Tell us, Mr. Audio. When tape was introduced in the U.S. after World War II, all tape recorders were full-track mono, meaning that the sound was recorded over almost the entire width of the quarter-inch tape. When Ampex introduced a two-track tape recorder, it allowed stereo recording. However, many engineers were slow to start using these machines since the reduced track size also meant a reduced signal-to-noise ratio. In the 1950s, to get around this issue, Ampex introduced a half-inch three-track machine that was still not as quiet as the full track, but was better than a quarter-inch two-track. A year or so later, Ampex also introduced a half-inch four-track. Believe it or not, none of these machines were capable of overdubbing, so engineers were still recording everything in one take. They'd usually split the ensemble into mono groups. They'd record the rhythm section on track one, the horns and strings on track two, and the singer on track three. If they had a four track, they might split a section like the vocals into lead and background singers and record them on two tracks. Neither Ampex nor any other manufacturer thought that overdubbing was a feature that anyone would ever use. It wasn't until Les Paul finally got delivery of a special ordered Ampex 1-inch 8-track late in 1956 that multi-track with overdubbing was finally possible. Thanks, Mr. Audio. For more interesting facts about sound, visit Mr. Audio at soundimages.com.